Hello guys and girls, it's T-Rex here and welcome to a Christmas special featuring the terraforming of Mars. The terraforming of Mars is the hypothetical process by which Mars's climate and surface would be deliberately changed to make large areas of its environment hospitable to humans and thus making the colonization of Mars safer and sustainable. As you guys may know, the, in the universe of Elite Dangerous, Mars has already been colonized and terraformed for hundreds of years. However, in real life, this is also achievable, so that's what we are going to talk about today. However, before we talk about Mars, we actually have to talk about our very own Earth. After all, the word terraforming means to make a planet like some, somewhere like Terra, and Terra refers to our very own Earth. So, as you can see in our canopy right now is the Earth-Moon system. To the left is our very own blue world, and to the right is our seemingly small moon. However, these two are the very important guidelines as to how we should terraform other planets. So, let's go to the system map and see the comparison between Earth and Mars first. So here we can see the entire solar system. Let's move to the third planet, which is our very own Earth. Here we can see its statistics. Of course, this is the basis for all Earth-like planets in the elite universe. So its Earth mass is 1.0000. It is the standard. So for all other later terraformable uh, Earth-like planets, we can see that it has a surface pressure, uh, surface pressure of one atmosphere, a surface temperature of around uh, average on average of about 288 kelvins, and its gravity 1g, radius around 6,378 kilometers, and its atmosphere composition is made up of 78% nitrogen, 21% oxygen, and about 1% argon. Its orbital period, 365 days, and its semi-major axis, it's about one astronomical unit. So this is where life began, and this is what Mars would be ultimately modeled after uh, as we talk about it later today. And here we have Earth's little brother, Mars. In many respects, Mars is the most Earth-like of all the other planets in the solar system. It is thought that Mars had a much more Earth-like environment early in its history, with a thicker atmosphere and abundant water that was lost over the course of hundreds of millions of years. However, this is where Elite Dangerous's universe deviates from our very own. In Elite Dangerous, Mars was colonized and terraformed very early on in the age of manned space exploration, and has since then been a very popular settlement destination for the wealthy and rich. Let's look at its data. It has around 0.1 Earth masses, a radius of around 3,400 kilometers, and 0.4 Earth Gs. Its surface temperature is 261 kelvins on average, which is slightly cooler than Earth's. However, it is where the atmosphere is uh, that it deviates from reality the most. In the present day, in the reality uh, that we live in, uh, Mars has only a surface pressure of around 0 0.08 PSIs, and that very, very thin atmosphere is made up of 96% carbon dioxide. However, in Elite Dangerous' universe, it has around 2.3 atmospheres, and its atmosphere is made up of 91.2% nitrogen, the most dominant gas in Earth's atmosphere as well and 8.7% oxygen. This deviates a lot from reality, but this is the ultimate goal of Mars terraforming, to make it an Earth-like world with Earth-like atmospheric compositions. There are many limitations to successfully terraforming Mars. There are three I find the most challenging. The first one being, the surface gravity of Mars is only 30%, 38% that of Earth's, so it is not known that if this weightlessness will cause health problems in humans in the long term. The second being that Mars's CO2 atmosphere is only about 1% of the surface pressure uh, that Earth experiences at sea level. So all, all the colonizers will have to wear space suits uh, with, with pressurized uh, conditions on, at all times when they're in the initial phases of terraforming Mars. The, the third reason 
probably the most challenging to overcome is that Mars lacks a magnetosphere, which poses challenges for mitigating solar radiation and retaining atmosphere. So the Earth's magnetic field is around 31 uh, east negative 6 Teslas, so Mars would require a very similar magnetic field intensity to similarly offset the effects of solar winds at its distance uh, further from the Sun. So, although Mars is a much smaller planet, it does need the necessary magnetosphere to protect it from these harmful space weather effects. Despite these challenging limitations, there are several aspects of Mars's nature that we can take advantage of to help us terraform it. First of all, Mars exists on the outer edge of the habitable zone, a region of the solar system where life can theoretically exist. Mars is on the border of this region called the extended habitable zone where liquid water on the surface may be supported if concentrated greenhouse gases could increase the atmospheric pressure. The second region we can terraform Mars is that Mars has a relatively small size, which means its climate and its atmosphere can be relatively easily uh, conditioned if using the right methods. The third reason, obviously the most important reason, is that large amounts of water ice exists below the Martian surface as well as on the surface at the poles. A couple months ago, NASA announced the discovery of liquid water on, Marge, on the Martian surface. So water will definitely be a very important resource that colonizers can presently take advantage of when they head out to the red planet. There are more than a couple methods proposed to terraform Mars. However, I will only talk about a few of them today, and I will pick out the ones that I think have some kind of scientific basis behind them and not merely science fiction. The first method is called carbon dioxide sublimation. There is presently enough carbon dioxide as in its dry ice form in the Martian South Pole, and if these uh, dry ice can be sublimated to gas by a climate warming of only a few degrees, this would increase the Martian atmospheric pressure to about 0.3 atmospheres. Although the colonizers was, would still have to wear their pressure suits, this would be a very important first step into completely changing Mars's atmospheric composition. The second method is also atmospheric related. Uh, its main method is to import ammonia onto Mars. Because as you know, uh, nitrogen which is present in ammonia is a very important buffer gas in our very own Earth atmosphere. So scientists have thought about importing ammonia into Mars, is that the, into the Martian atmosphere to uh, make buffers uh, such as nitrogen more prominent in its composition so that it might create similar effects in its atmosphere as it does in ours. The third method is the uh, utilizes orbital mirrors and these mirrors are huge and they are made of thin aluminized PET film that would be placed in orbit around Mars to increase the total insulation it receives. So this is pretty common sense. So basically uh, sunlight after escaping the Martian surface will be reflected back onto Mars and therefore increasing its surface temperature and you know melting the dry ice and releasing all that CO2 into the atmosphere. The fourth method is called albedo reduction. Now this name seems scientific, but it's really common sense as well. As you guys may know, dark colors actually absorb heat better. So there has been propositions to actually spread dark dust um, from Mars's moons, Phobos and Deimos, which are the, among the most blackest bodies in the solar system. And when we spread these dark dusts onto Mars, then the ground would actually absorb more sunlight and therefore warming the atmosphere. The fifth method is in comet impact. Now this seems kind of science fiction, but there's actually a science behind it. So if we can div uh, direct these small comets into the Martian surface, the impact energy would be released as heat, and this heat could sublimate CO2 in the Martian soil, or if there is liquid water present uh, in, the, uh, in this stage of the terraforming process, it could actually vaporize it to steam and release it into the atmosphere. The final method I am going to talk about is a very recent method. It was developed in 2014 by NASA's Institute for Advanced Concepts. It is called ecopoesis. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right, but I hope, I certainly hope I am. So this method involves employing colonies of oxygen producing uh, bacteria and algae for the production of molecular oxygen on Martian soil. So basically using uh, 
uh, ve our very own organisms that would uh, normally produce oxygen on Earth, on Mo but actually employ these on Mars to try change the atmosphere that way. So, uh, so they are still trying to research whether uh, as to whether this method is actually viable, as it would require huge amounts of these uh, bacteria and algae to produce the O2 needed to restore the Martian atmosphere. But uh, the future definitely looks promising to the terraforming of Mars. Transforming a barren planet into a livable, breathable Earth-like world is no easy talk. But just as President John F. Kennedy said back in the 1960s when the Apollo missions were initiated, he said, we do things not because they're easy, but because they are hard. And it is because we have the spirit to explore. It is because we have the spirit to spread life. And it is because we have so much people out there, including myself, who want to contribute to this cause, that I think, in the not-so-distant future, we just might have a second place to call home.